For decades, we have relied on text to columns. Then in 2013, Flashfill revolutionized the Excel workflow. While both are useful, they are static and won't update if the data changes. If you are seeking a dynamic alternative, the text split function introduced in 2022 is the solution. I am Nabil Murad, and in this tutorial, I'll guide you through using the text split function to break a text string into columns, rows, or both of them, even with multiple delimiters. How can we make the function spill in two directions, or even filter the source text? Can it help with date issues? Let's dive into Excel. Here is my stock file. You can download the exercise file and follow along by clicking on the link below the video. In this worksheet in column B, I have a list of names and I want to split them. In cell D4, I use a text split function. The text split function splits text into rows or columns by a delimiter. So I type equal text split. I select cell B4. I type a comma. And what's your column delimiter? My column delimiter is a space. I type it in double quotation, double quote, space, double quote. I close the bracket. And when I hit enter, the label has been split into three columns. If I copy this function down, it splits each name into columns, but it doesn't differentiate between middle and last name, just splitting the text into columns. I'll show you a solution for this problem later in the video. I can also split into multiple rows. So in this example, I use a text split function to split my name into two rows. I hit tab, I select cell B4, comma, that's the column delimiter. I want to skip it. I type another comma, and for the row delimiter, I type double quote space, double quote. When I close the bracket, I would have split my name into two rows. I can split simultaneously into columns and rows. And here is an example. In cell B7, I have some fruits and the price of these fruits. I want to create an array. I want to create a small list that shows the name of the fruit in one column and the price in another column. Then I'm going to use a text split function. For the text to split, I select cell B7. I type a comma. For the column delimiter, I use the equal sign, double quote, equal, double quote, and then comma. For the row delimiter, I use the comma, double quote, comma, double quote, and then I close the bracket. And when I hit enter, I was able to split in two directions. What if you use a wrong delimiter? Or if you don't have any delimiter? Then in this case, the original text will be returned. And here is an example. I type an equal sign, text split. I hit tab. Here is my text in cell B4. I type a comma. What if I type a delimiter that doesn't exist? Double quote, comma, double quote, and I close the bracket. When I hit enter, the original text is returned. If you have empty values, then the text split function will return an empty column. So let's type equal text split. And then I hit tab. What's your text? I select this one. Note that I have a comma, but I also have a double comma that is a missing value. So if I type a comma and then for my column delimiter, I type a comma, double quote, comma, double quote, and I close the bracket. When I hit enter, there is an empty column for the two consecutive commas. I can edit my function and then type a comma for the row delimiter. I want to skip it and then select ignore empty. I set it to true. I hit tab, I close the bracket, and then hit enter, and I was able to fix this problem. You might also have a text with a space delimiter, but there is a double space. So let's see how we deal with that in a different way. I type an equal sign, text split, I hit tab. I want to split the text in cell B7, I type a comma, my delimiter is a space, double quote, space, double quote. When I close the bracket and then hit enter, then I get an empty column. But this time, I'm going to fix the problem by wrapping cell B7 in a trim function. So I click before B7, I type trim, I hit tab, I close the bracket after B7, and when I hit enter, I was able to fix the problem in a different way. If you have a list of dimensions, 
length, width, and height, and use the text split function, the result will be returned as text. So if I type equal text split, and then I hit tab, I select the text, and then I type a comma, these are numbers, my delimiter is an X, double quote, X, double quote, and I close the bracket, I hit enter. The text split function returns text that is left aligned. If you want to right align it to be perceived as a number, then we can do so many things. A double negative, I multiply by one, or I can add zero. When I hit enter, I would have fixed the problem, and I can click and drag to copy it all the way down, fill without formatting. In some situations, you don't have one single delimiter. You might have multiple delimiters. In this example, I have a first, middle, and last separated by commas, and then a pipe symbol, and then position. So I'm going to use multiple delimiters. So I type equal text split. I hit tab. I want to split the text in cell B4, comma, but because I have multiple delimiters, I'm going to include them in curly bracket. I type an opening curly bracket, double quote, comma, double quote, that's my first delimiter, and then comma. I have a pipe as well as a delimiter, double quote, pipe, double quote. I close the curly bracket and I close the bracket for the text split function. When I hit enter, I was able to split the text with multiple delimiters. I can copy the function on the way down and fill without formatting. The text split function spills in one single direction, but it doesn't spill in two ways, so I cannot provide an entire array for the function to spill in two directions. But we can work around this limitation by combining the text join function and the text split. So if I type equal text join, and then I hit tab, what's your delimiter? I want to join all the names with a pipe delimiter. So I type double quote, pipe double quote, and then comma, I ignore empty, another comma, and the text will be the entire array in column B. When I close the bracket and then hit enter, then I get one single string of text. Now I'm going to split it with two different delimiters. I put my function in the edit mode, and then I wrap my text join function in a text split function. Text split, and then I hit tab. I want to split the result of the text join function. I type a comma. For the column delimiter, I use a space, double quote, space, double quote, and then comma. For the row delimiter, I use the pipe, double quote, pipe, double quote. I close the bracket for the text split function. And when I hit enter, the function spills in two directions. In this example, I have some data, first name, last name, age, city, and province. And I just want to extract the city. So not only I would like to split the text, but I also want to filter it in a way that it extracts only the city. If I use a text split function, equal text split, and then I hit tab, I want to split this text, comma, with a comma delimiter, so I type it in double quotation, and I close the bracket, and I hit enter. But actually, I just want the city, and the city is in column four. That's the perfect job of an index function. I put my function in the edit mode, and I wrap my text split function in an index function, and I hit tab, I want to extract column number four, then I type comma, that's the row number argument, I type another comma and I type four, I close the bracket and then I hit enter, I was able to extract the city. Can we have this function spill for the entire array? Yes, I can use a by row function to do that. Then I'm going to copy the index and split function, Control C to copy from the formula bar, I hit escape and I hit delete, and now I'm going to create a by row function. So I type equal by row, and then I hit tab. The by row function is a lambda helper function. It will execute a certain function for an entire array. So I select the entire array in column B, and then I type a comma, and then I type a lambda function. Lambda. The lambda function will refer to every row from B4 to B19 by using a parameter. I type x as a parameter. x equals every row in the range B4 to B19. And then comma, it asks me about the calculation of the function that I'll be using. I paste my index and text split function, control V. But in my text split function, I refer to B4 
Now I'll be referring to x. I close the bracket at the end and I close the bracket for the by row function. When I hit enter, the function spills down and I was able to filter my source data using a text split function. When I use the text split function to separate text that doesn't have a pattern, so I might have four names, I might have two names, I might have a name consisting of a first, middle, and last name, and I just want the first and last name. Then in this case, if I use a text split function, it won't return just the first and last name. So let's type equal text split, and then I hit tab. I want to split this text in cell B4, comma, double quote, space, double quote, and I close the bracket and I hit enter. So it splits the text into different columns, but I just want John and Smith. So I'm going to copy this function and I'll put it inside a let function. Control X, I hit escape. I start over again by putting the text split function in a let function. So I type equal let and I hit tab. The let function allows me to create variables and assign values to these variables. I'll be referring to the name with a variable. I can call it name. And then I type a comma, and the value for name will be my text split function, control V. I type a comma, and to move to the next line, I hit Alt Enter. Now I want to count how many names I have. So I create another variable. Let's call it count. And count will be the count A of the variable name. I then type a comma. Alt Enter. Now I want to extract the first name with an index function. I create another variable, I call it first, and then comma. I use an index function, index of the variable name, comma one. I close the bracket for the index function, and then comma. I want to extract the last name, then I create another variable, Alt Enter. I call it last and then comma, I use another index function, and this time the index function will look at the array named name, and then I type a comma, and I want to extract the last value. The last value is the result of my count a function, then I type the name of the variable count, I close the bracket, comma, I hit alt enter, and now I want to put the first and last side by side, and I use an edge stack function to stack them horizontally, edge stack. I hit the tab key. I want the first, comma, last. I close the bracket for the edge stack. I close the bracket for the let function. I hit enter. Now I can copy this function on the way down, and I get only the first name and the last name. This is part of a bank statement downloaded from an online banking. When I look at it in Excel, dates are perceived as text, they are left aligned, and they have a pattern different than the pattern on my Windows operating system. So they have the month, and then the day, and then the year, while I'm using day, month, year. I would like to fix that and have them recognized as numbers, that means right aligned, so that I can use them in further analysis. I would like to split the date in cell B4 with a text split function, equal text split. I hit tab, I click on cell B4, and my delimiter is a forward slash, double quote, forward slash, double quote, and I close the bracket, and then I hit enter. I have in one column the month, in the second column I have the day, and in the third column I have the year. I would like to build the date as a day, month, year, and I want it to be right aligned. So I'm going to copy this function, delete and start over again by creating a let function. So I type equal let and then I hit tab. I want to create my first variable. I can give it the name x, comma, and x refers to the text split function that I previously created. I paste it at this position. I type comma, alt enter. And then I want to extract the second column first with an index function, that's the day. So I type D as the name of the variable and I use an index function. I hit tab, my array will be X and then comma. I don't want a row number, I want a column number. So I type another comma and I want column two. I close the bracket, comma, 
alt enter then we want to extract the months i'll give it the name m comma with a similar index function but it uses column one i close the bracket comma alt enter now i want to extract the year with an index function that uses column three i type a comma alt enter now i want to build my date using a date function i type date the date function requires year, month, and day, so I'm going to refer to them using the three variables, ymd, y, comma, m, comma, d, close the bracket for the date, close the bracket for the let function. When I hit enter, here is my date right aligned in the format I wanted, day, month, year, and then I can copy my function all the way down, and I was able to fix the column of dates. In this tutorial, I showed you different ways of using the text split function. If you found value in this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to my channel to be notified when your tutorials are released. The best is yet to come. Thanks for watching and see you next time.